Hey there, welcome back. Today I will walk you through the Sony a7 IV menu system. If you're using Sony as your first camera, the menu system can be overwhelming. So let me walk you through all the menu systems that you need to set right to get this type of video content. I'm using the Sony a7 IV right now and the settings I have is picture profile 8 that is for the Sony S Log 3 that gets the best dynamic range and with the sony a7 IV you can use the s log 3 without any problem i'll walk you through how to set it and afterwards how to color correct it so let's get started i will explain why i have chose certain settings in the way that i have set right now so before you start the menu setting turn the dial on the top to video settings because the video and photo settings and the menu options differ so make sure that on the top dial you set it to video mode and then the exposure as m m for manual settings and then jump on to menu by pressing the menu button once you are in the menu the first thing that you want to change is the image quality from the first menu Click on that and select the file format as XAVCS All Intra 4K. You have multiple options. So this is the fourth option from the top. So that's the highest quality. Movie setting frame rate. I use 24 frames per second. You can use 24 or 30 when you are talking head like this. And if you want slow motion, you can use 60 frames per second. The next one is SNQ mode where you set the frame rate as 24 or 30 and the speed as 60. Then proxy recording, if you want to have a proxy low quality file, you can turn that on. And then rest everything, I have set it as default. I enable the distortion and the breathing compensation as on because that's a new feature Sony a7 IV has, so why not turn it on? The next one is the media. So I have a CF Express a card so i have put that in the slot one so that's what i'm going to set it here so if you have two sd cards v90 speed then you can choose either one or two you also have the option to switch between the media once the first media is full you can switch it over to slot one or slot two but in my case i'm using just the slot one and then there is an option to recover image database file First time I always run it so that if there is any formatting issues that is being taken care. And the next is file setting. Here all I do is set a name, file format name. And in order to do that, you have to go to the third option, file name format and choose title plus date. And in the title, I select A74 so that all the file will have a prefix of A74. Uh, shooting mode, I am using PASM, which is Aperture, Shutter, Priority, and Program mode. And then camera set memory, we will come back to it later. Once you have all the settings dialed in, you can set it to different custom settings so you can get it pretty fast by turning in. Uh, USB streaming, set it to 1080p 30 frames per second. That's the highest quality available. And then enable it. The movie recording can be enabled if you want to simultaneously record it. Silent mode, if you want to turn the shutter silent or not, you can turn it on and off. And that's what I have here. Anti-flicker is adjusting the shutter as needed to reduce the flicker. So that's a new option in Sony a7 IV. So I would say turn it on. Audio recording, I will always turn it on. And the audio record level, if I'm using a mic like this, then I would set it as 11 because this has all the settings going into my external road roadcaster pro otherwise if you're using camera mic which i don't recommend using but if you're using it in a pinch set it to 25 and if you're using the digital microphone like the ecm b1m then you don't have to set it's all automatically taken care wind noise turn it off and audio level display also turn it on so those are the settings and then time code, you don't have to do anything uh, if you're just using the camera. Steady shot, leave it at standard. If you're just running or walking, then use the active mode, but it will crop in a little bit. So if you're using tripod, you can just turn it off also. Steady shot adjustment is auto. For zoom, I use the clear image zoom so that you can digitally zoom in. So if you have a 20 millimeter, you can still zoom in a bit. And then all other settings, I leave it at the default because I don't really use it or we don't really need it. Shooting mode, you can turn the grid 
line display on so this way you can see the rule of thirds and then emphasize record display turn it on so that when you press the record it will highlight the screen with a red border so you know that it's recording rest everything i'll leave it untouched third menu is the exposure so here under exposure i only change the iso to from auto i'll just set the minimum iso to be around 300 or 400 but it up to you how you want to set it uh, since I'm using SLOG3, I set the ISO at 800 and the minimum ISO at 160 and the maximum at uh, 51200 because anything above, it's kind of very noisy. So that's my setting. You can change it the way you wanted it. Uh, rest everything, I'll keep it as is. Exposure compensation, I don't change it. Whatever is the default, I use that as is. And the next is metering mode. This is more for photo. White balance, I set it at a Kelvin option. So I have the white balance set as 5500 Kelvin. So that way I have the good option here. All right, so my battery died. So I had to change the battery and uh, let's continue setting up the menu. So we set the white balance to 5500 Kelvin. That's because I'm indoor and I have a light that is set to 5500. If it is outdoors, you can set it to 6000 if it is a cloudy day. And if you have tungsten light, then you can set it to 3200. Or if you don't want to set by the Kelvin temperature, you can use select the options that is default, which has daylight, tungsten and things like that. So you can use that. The next thing in the menu is the shockless white balance and that is set to medium or slow so that when the white balance changes, it's not a sudden shock. All right, so after the white balance is the color tone menu. So first thing in the color tone is D-range optimizer. I would turn it off for video. You can turn it on to auto for photos. Then next is creative look. So you can set it as neutral if you want to have very basic non-saturated colors. And then next is picture profile. So I set to picture profile eight, that is the S log three. Picture profile seven is S log two. With the Sony A7 IV, use the S log three, that is better. And then the S gamma three cine would be the log option. So by selecting that, you would get the best dynamic range that the camera has to offer. Soft skin effect, I would turn it off. It's not as good. And then zebra display is important. So in my case, I would set the zebra display as on at a level of 75 because I'm exposing for the skin and I want the skin tone to be nice and crisp, not overexposed. So 75 is good for my color. If you are Caucasian, then keep it at 65 plus or minus five. And if you're dark skin, maybe keep it at 75 plus or minus. So that's the zebra levels that I have. All right, so the next thing in the menu is the focus area. So autofocus and manual focus, you can set it to continuous autofocus and the transition speed for the autofocus to your appropriate levels. So I will set it as fast and autofocus assist as on. So even when you are in the autofocus, not manual focus, you can still see the red highlighted area where the camera is focused on. So that way the focus assist will help you all right, so the next one is focus area limit. I don't do much with that. I'll just keep the default as is. Going back to focus area color, I leave it at white. And the next one is AF frame display. So you would turn that one on. All the default here is for eye autofocus for the human. The only thing that I turn it on is the face or the frame around the eye. So that way I know that my eyes is in focus. All right, uh, next one is the register face priority. Turn that on. Focus assistant, set the focus map to on because that's a new feature that is in A7 IV. Focus magnifier, I leave it as default. Magnification time and the initial focus magnification all as default. Peaking display, I would turn it on and the color, I would change it to red. And the peaking level, I would leave it at mid because that is more accurate. And the peaking color, as I said, red would be better for focus. Then going back to the next menu system, which is playback. 
I don't change much here in the briefcase setting, the next menu, which is customizing the actual button. So we will come back to the customization in a bit because I have to see what I wanted to customize for the Sony a7 IV. So we will have that at a different video. So let's skip that customization part at this time. And the next thing that I wanted to do is to set the shutter appropriately because we have selected the frame rate as 24 frames per second. So now what we need is we need to double that and have the shutter speed at 1 50th of a shutter. So I have now set the shutter to 1 50th of a shutter and all of the settings are good. ISO is at 800, that is the base ISO for S-Log3. And now I'm all set to start recording. And at this point, if I want, I can set or save this into one of the custom one, two or three. That way I have quick access back to this. And uh, here is how the video looks like with this immediate setting. All right, so this is the first recording test after setting the menu to one 50th of a shutter, 24 frames per second, S-Log3, ISO 800 F1.8 and 4 to 2 10 bit color this is how it looks like so there you have it all right now you have seen that the video quality after using this settings now i'll show you how i color correct in the editor so i'm using davinci resolve because that is a free default editor available for everybody to use and it comes with all the default logs available so you don't have to download any sony logs profile so if you're using s-log3 you can change it to rec 709 in the davinci resolve to get the normal colors back and then you can just slightly adjust the contrast and you should be all good to go so i have a four-step process i import the footage then i apply the default sony s-log3 to rec 709 log after that i adjust the curve so that i get a little more contrast to the picture and the fourth is just optional so i apply the lut and then i reduce the output gain to just 30 to 40 percent depending on the like so that's the final look and that's what you're seeing right now so again i shoot everything in s log 3 that is the picture profile 8 then i apply contrast and then apply a look lut which is something that i bought from the third party if you're interested in that process in detail i can make a follow-up video let me know in the comment section below but, uh, yeah that's the whole process so i connect an external mic here when i'm talking head so that it's very close to me and that records my audio directly into the camera so i have a separate video on that you can check it out here that was using a7c but it's the same process for a74 so there you have it guys so that's the complete menu setup for recording videos and this can be used indoor or outdoor for any 24 frames per second film and if you want to shoot slow motion then i would show you how to do that uh, just you have to increase the frame rate from 24 to 60 frames per second and the shutter to double it that would be 120 so we will do that in the next video but for time being this is all the basic menu setup that you need to do on the sony a7 IV to get such good quality video for YouTube especially. All right guys, so that's all for today. And I hope you enjoyed this long video. And if you have learned something from this video, let me know in the comment section below. If you like it, give it a like. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. And I'll see you with more A7 IV videos in the next year. All right, take care, bye.